Hey, welcome back to the Jack Chapel Show. I'm Jack Chapel, and this question actually comes from Ahmed. I got it through, a, was it an email or a Facebook message? I actually forget, but he says, here, just let me read it out. Uh, what is it that got you into real estate and stock market investing, and what pushed you when most people would have caved? Oh, this is kind of a loaded question. I thought it was worthy of a video topic because it's, a lot of you guys I know are starting to get into investing or into some sort of career field. Most of you are between the ages of you know, 16 and 34. Um, most of you, actually the vast majority of you are between 16 and 24. More, more than half of you actually. So what got me into business, stocks and real estate? Uh, I guess a few kind of different things actually. Now that I'm starting to think about it, I know I gave Ahmed a little bit of a different answer here, but I, gave, I was, had some time to think about it and when I was around, when I was a little kid, I actually talk about this in my ebook, which is almost done. It's coming out this week, so I'll, I'm sure I'll make a video on it when it gets released. And all you, all of you people that have bought my program, you'll get it for free. It's like it's not, it's not a giant ebook. It's like 50 pages, maybe. I don't even know yet. It's like 50, 60, 70 pages. But I talk about this. So when I was a kid, I wanted to be a doctor. And I loved science. I went that entire route. I was planning on medical school too. And, uh, but I remember my parents drilling into my head. Yeah, sure, you can be a doctor, that's great. But make sure you own the building. And I didn't really understand what that meant when I was a kid, when I was like six, seven, eight years old. Own the building, like, what? I don't really get why I would wanna do that. I just wanna be a doctor. And then as the years went on and went on, I realized that, oh, the building is where the money is. <laughs> the building is, well, sure, you make tons of money as a doctor, you know, six figures, sometimes seven if you're a surgeon. But uh, yeah, you make good money as a doctor, but you can make even more money in real estate. That's what they were trying to drill into me. You can make more money in real estate. Sometimes you won't, sometimes you will. And that's kind of what when I was a kid, what started kind of getting me thinking about business a little bit when I was like really little. And then, you know, as the years went on, I started turning 13, 14, 15 years old. That's when I started getting interested in stocks. And I got interested in stocks because I liked money. I liked making money and that's okay. That's probably my biggest motivation right now is money. And that's, that's okay. I tell people that like, it's okay to like money and to pursue wealth. That's fine. That's good. I think it's noble if anything. But um, yeah, 13, 14, 15, I was still planning on being a doctor. And, but I wanted to like think of ways where I could make even a little bit more money, <laughs> even if I was a doctor. So I'd like, I had the real estate thing investing partially in my head, but not really. I was like, okay, stocks, I can make 6% per year on all of my savings, while most other people will only make 1% and actually lose money because of inflation. So. I started thinking about stocks and I started thinking, hey, maybe that could be like a secondary career path and when I'm 40 years old, I can just retire and live off dividends. That was honestly my thought when I was 14 years old. I was like, that's gonna be my way to make money, stocks. But uh, as I got older, you kind of realized that's not the way to go. Stocks are a good way to passively invest money and to pick up you know, a few hundred bucks here, a few hundred bucks there, but that shouldn't be your main career path, is what I'm trying to say. And so, what made me actually invest was when I was, you know, like 18 years old, I just had a bunch of money and I'd already done five years of research because I for four years of research. I thought I was already good to go. I started investing. Like I, I wish that there was one thing that just kind of pushed me to investing in stocks, but it was just honestly years of just picking up information. I was just super confident in myself that I'd be able to do it. I mean, once, Here's a message for all of you people that are kind of nervous about the stock market or nervous about investing or nervous about starting a business. If you, okay, if you were to know everything there is a note about your field or your business or whatever, and you haven't started it yet, once you get to the point where you think you should start it, you won't be nervous whatsoever. You'll be confident as balls. Trust me, as balls. I don't even know why I said balls. But that's what I kind of learned. Like the more information you have on the subject, the more you learn, the more you practice, the more confident you are in your ability. So by the time I was 18 and started investing in stocks, I mean, I was like, I was like, fucking yeah, I'm going to make tons of money off this. And I, I did in the first few years, I made thousands and thousands of dollars when I was between the ages of 18 and 21 before I got sick and had to 
um, kind of sell a lot of my stock to pay for some medical bills. So that's honestly why I started investing in stocks. And that's how there was no one giant thing that pushed me. It was just years of building up my fucking confidence and learning. And then once I reached the point where I could fit legally invest in stocks, I was already good to go. I was like, okay, I've been doing this for four years already. So, and then the real estate one. Oh, what got me into real estate? So this was, all, the real estate was in the past year or two, actually. So I'll take you back, actually it might've been three years. So I'll take you back. I was in second or third year. It was in third year university. And I was still planning on, you know, being some sort of doctor or doing something in the med, well, I mean, I shouldn't say that. I was always planning on being an entrepreneur, but I thought, I swear, I had this thought in my head. I would have to take a shit job for a few years, make 40 or 50 grand a year, even though I didn't like that job, so I can build up a real estate investment company. That was my plan, I swear. And, and then eventually I could build more businesses from that. I was only gonna do a shit job for a few years so I can get my first property, and then hopefully I could build something off that, maybe. So yeah, third year, I was like, okay, I want to invest in a property. I will probably at my best only make 40K a year. At some, I've had this thought in my head. I can't believe it's changed so much now. I had this thought in my head that right after university, I would only be making like 30 to 40K a year, even though I was already having a passive income of about 10K a year, roughly at that time. I'd only make, th that's what I thought, only 30 to 40K a year. And because that's what people, that's what graduates are paid these days from university. They're not going, and some are just unemployed. A lot of my friends are unemployed or picking up odd jobs here. They're, a lot of their jobs aren't, aren't secure. They aren't, you know, in a, an employee working at some giant retail company or something. A lot of them are just like, hey, when work comes in, here you go. It's like freelance and it sucks. So yeah, I was thinking, yeah, 30, 40K a year. So I started doing the calculations on the computer. I started looking at uh, what kind of properties I could afford with 40k a year and uh, they weren't good. <laughs> in fact, if you type in $30,000 into a lot of mortgage calculators in Ontario, it won't give you anything because they're just like, yeah, you can't afford anything. So I was typing in 40k a year and I could only afford like a $180,000 mortgage or $140,000 mortgage or something. And I was just like, okay, Look, the average home price in Ontario is $550,000. I live in an area where the average home price is a million dollars. And I would have to drive about four to five hours in any direction just to buy a property that is in my price range. So what got me into real estate was, I talk about this in my ebook too, I go into a little bit more detail, was I was listening to a Grant Cardone podcast and I remember he was having, he was talking about mortgages and it was something that changed my life forever. And hopefully it'll help you guys too. It changed my life was he was talking about like how some people are having trouble getting mortgages. And then he said, um, oh, wait, actually I should mention one other thing. Sorry, side tangent. One other thing is that you would need two years of, of taxable income in a row at the same job to get a mortgage in Canada. That's the rule. So you need to, to make 40K at the same job for two years to get a mortgage. And so then Grant Cardone, he, I was listening to his podcast on mortgages and he said, like, look, okay, you're making 40K a year in your first year. Um, they're not even gonna look at you to get a mortgage in your first year if you're making 40K. It's just not possible. But what if you were to make over 100K? Who's gonna, there's gonna be places that will not turn you down for a mortgage if you made 100K in your first year. And so I remember that within a span of like 30 seconds, my brain just went from, okay, I was thinking about this the wrong way. Instead of using my, instead of using my 40K example into the calculator, my 40K calculation to invest in property, what I should be doing is turning this 40K into 100 somehow. And so I kind of went down this, all of the thoughts in my head. I was like, okay, what can I do? Do I have to work two jobs? Do I have to work 16 hour days? I was like, you know what? I like real estate. I want to, I want to have my own hours. The perfect thing for me would to become some sort of uh, agent or broker. And so I was still in university and I started my real estate agent license court course. That's what happened. Um, it was just, I wanted to increase my income 
And I wasn't scared at all. I already knew a lot about real estate. I already knew how to get deals done. I mean, I worked half for a guy who owned, who was a real estate broker. I, I didn't work on, at the time, I didn't work at his brokerage side. I was working on one of his other companies, his research consulting companies, but it was still half real estate. It was weird, but it was good. So I already knew a lot about real estate. I was like, you know what? This is the avenue to go to grow my income. And that's what I did. That's why I jumped into real estate. It was not, it was to make more money so that I could invest more in the future. It, it, it wasn't for, because I, I loved it. And I mean, it's fun. <laughs> I mean, if I, if ideally for me, I would just do some like these videos full time if I could, but um, real estate's still fun. I mean, I still like it. And that's, ki that's kind of what the, why I got into all this stuff. And what pushed me to get my license was just my fear. Oh yeah, I guess I should talk about this too. What pushed me to get my license and to actually sign up was, um, well, I guess two things. One is that I'm the kind of person that once I make my mind up about something, I will just go and do it. I'm not one of those people like, oh, maybe I should jump into this with, or maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I'll just dip my toe in the water, see what happens. No, like if I'm going swimming, I just fucking jump in. I don't go like, oh, this is cold. Oh, this is cold. This is cold. No, I'm, you just go fucking jump in. That's what I do with my life decisions. So um, that helped with, you know, within, I swear, within the same day, within me hearing that Grant Cardone podcast, I sent in my application for my real estate license in the same day. Because I spent eight hours. I'm like, this could be my, my avenue. I'm, I remember looking it up, like full-time real estate agents make on average like 50 to 60K in my area. And that's good. I was like, okay, that increases my income 20K. That's pretty good, but maybe I could do better. There's no limit if you're a real estate agent, which is also why I liked it. It's because when you're a real estate agent, you could, there's no cap on how much money you can make. If you're an employee, it's set salary. It's 35 grand a year. That's how much you can make. Maybe you'll get a bonus of a grand, right? $500. Fuck. Man, like it's kind of sad in the past, in the past few months, actually, it's, you know, I've, I've got to know a lot of people that are, didn't, they're a lot older than me. They're in their 50s and their 60s. And in terms of financial situation, they're, they're not doing too well. I mean, they're doing good. I mean, they're making money. They're paying their living expenses. But like, they're making like 40K a year. And they just, they're like, they don't have much to their name. They don't own a house. And, you know, the fact that I'm probably going to make like eight grand this month by the end of it, like that's just only, that's not like, I'm probably going to make over that. I'm just eight's kind of conservative this month. Like when you start to think about it, like $8,000 is what they would make in what, four, three, three months. It's kind of weird how that happens. So. I just thought, I, I don't know. I got into real estate because there's no cap on my earnings and I wanted to make money and that's what happened. Seriously, so here's my message to you guys. If you do not like the employee life, if you like the entrepreneurial life, think of something that you could, it doesn't even have to be a business. I mean, like if you're a real estate agent, yeah, I do consider that a business, but a lot of people don't. I mean, if you're like a, a freelance teacher, that can be a business, even though some people, you know, don't consider that to be a business. If you do something where you have your own hours and work for yourself, I consider that a business. So think of something that you would want to do if, if money is your motivation to get out of the lower. I got so, by the way, one, I have to talk about this too. Sorry, I'm going on so many tangents here right now, but I just, this is such an, uh, this is a video for you guys. When I set up my, uh, when I uploaded my financial goals 2017 video and said for you guys to email me, holy fucking shit. You guys gave me a lot of emails. You know what? I might make a whole separate video on that. That's what I'm gonna do for my next video. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. You're all very beautiful people. Watch the next video.